Okay, so now we're gonna start getting into some really good ones. So this one, if you uh, if you if you watched my series on factoring, one of the main important things I told you, you know, you have to be very very strong in factoring as we move on. We can't just go to factoring and kind of understand it, but not really get a lot of practice with it because you're gonna come to a problem like this, and if you're not really strong with your factoring, it's gonna take you a very 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 long time to be able to try to figure it out. Because we notice when we're trying to simplify this, we can't break up this because it's addition and subtraction in our denominator. So I can't say, oh, 6 divided into negative 24 because it's separated by addition and subtraction. So we need to take this whole polynomial, divide it by the whole polynomial, and see how can that we simplify the denominator and the numerator where we could get some values that are going to divide into 1. So to do that, we look into factoring. And unfortunately, I see that. First of all, I can't factor out a GCF out of either the numerator or the denominator, and I'm not seeing any perfect square trinomials or a use of difference of two squares. So it looks like we're going to have to go back to our traditional factoring technique. And I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to do one for the numerator, and I'm going to do one for the denominator. And I'm just going to use my x method. And my x method, I'll make this a little bit bigger. For using the x method, remember that when we're taking a, a quadratic, which is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, to factor when our a is equal to 1, what we're going to do is we're going to take our value of c, which is negative 24 for the numerator, and then we take our b, which is positive 2. Then for our denominator, we do the same thing. We take our c and put it up top, and our b on the bottom. And I'll even write those up there. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take the factors of each one of our c. So I have 24. I'm not going to be concerned that it's negative. I'll talk about that in a second. And here it's positive. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite all of the factors for my 24. I don't care if it's negative right now. I'm just going to write down all the factors. So to multiply two numbers to give me 24, let's look at all the possibilities. I could do 24 times 1. I could do 12 times 2. I could do 6. Oh, I'm sorry, let's do this. I could do 8 times 3. I could do 6 times 4. And it looks like that's going to be it. Then let's go over to 6. For 6, I could do 6 times 1 and then 3 times 2. OK, now I said that it's multiplying. It has to multiply to give me a negative 24. That means that one of these values has to be negative, right? You can see I have my larger factors on the left and my smaller factors on the right. And that's not necessary, but it's helpful, especially when you're looking at if something's going to be negative. Because when we're asking, when we're factoring using this method, what we're trying to say is what two numbers multiply to give me negative 24, but then add to give me a positive 2. So if I'm going to be adding two numbers, and one of them has to be negative, right? Because when you're multiplying to get a negative number, you have to do a negative times a positive. Because a positive times a positive doesn't give you a negative, nor does a negative times a negative. So one of them has to be negative. But when I add them, the larger value has to be positive for me to get a positive value. So therefore, these numbers have to be positive, and these numbers have to be negative. Now out of these, we know they all add multiply to give us negative 24 if these are negative. But out of that, out of that so if all of these are negative, which one of these are going to add up to a positive 2? And there's only one answer, which is a positive 12, negative 2. All right. Then let's go over to here. I need to multiply two numbers to give me 6. So therefore, my two values, my two factors, are either both going to be positive or they're both going to be negative. But since they're adding to give me a positive 7, I'm not going to multiply two negative numbers and then add two negative numbers to give me a positive. So therefore, my values have to be positive. So since they're adding to give me a positive 7, I know that the only two factors that could be would be 6 times 1, because it gives me 6. And then 6 plus 1 gives me 7. OK, so now I'm just going to rewrite this by using my factor. So now that I've factored this expression, so on the top, rather than writing it as a trinomial, I'm going to write it as a product of its factors, which would be x plus 12 times x minus 2. OK? Um, then what we're going to look at is taking my denominator, and 
No, that's wrong. 12 times 2. That gives me 10. Where am I getting 2? OK. <laughs> we notice now that the only two values that give me 2 are going to be 6 and negative 4. I knew I was making a mistake somewhere. Sorry about that. So let's go back through this and let's rewrite as a product of our factors, which would be x plus 6 times x minus 4. That sounds a little bit better because 6 times negative 4 is negative 24, and 6 plus negative 4 gives me positive 2. Sorry about that. Then I go ahead and write my factors over here, which are going to be x plus 6, and then x plus 1. OK, so now we notice that between my binomials, notice I'm using parentheses, right? Between these, I have multiplication. And remember, we can separate our denominator across multiplication. So what we notice, though, is and when we look at this, by separating, I can, I can rewrite x plus 6 over x plus 6. Well, I know that since those are exactly the same, those are going to divide to 1. And therefore, I'm just going to be left with x minus 4 divided by x plus 1 times 1. Well, times the 1 is not going to change anything. So my final solution, or simplified uh, expression, is going to be x minus 4 divided by x plus 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about my little mistake. But that's how you factor two trinomials to simplify a rational expression. Thanks.